Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video. Thank you once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Leonardo Officina Fiora Fountain Pen. This story begins with a dude named Ciro Matron, one of the three former owners of the Delta brand. Ciro one day had a son, and his son's name was Salvatore. When Sal grew up, he worked with Dad at the Delta brand as a designer of fountain pens. Now, while at Delta, Sal was responsible for several successful designs and ideas. Unfortunately, this alone was not enough to keep the Delta brand afloat. As time went on, Financial decisions were made among the owners, autonomous of each other, as desperate grabs for immediate cash flow, causing retailers and distributors in different regions of the world selling Delta pens to suffer. Many retailers and distributors were left with no choice but to abandon ship on Delta and no longer carried the brand. In the year 2017, many bridges and relationships had been burned, subsequently ending the Delta brand. After the Delta brand went under, Sal's bread and butter was making pens for the Armando Simone Club. Shortly after that, in the year 2018, Sal and his dad, Ciro, joined forces to create a new brand of their own called Leonardo Officina. Their mandate was to take their family tradition of pen making expertise and make pens that appeal to people using high quality materials that are colorful and vibrant, at the same time vintage and classic in style. One such pen is the pen in question here today, the Leonardo Officina Furora. This line of pens come in a handful of colors, including bronze, blue, teal, yellow, and red. They are also offered with gold-plated or rhodium-plated trims and steel nibs plated to match the furniture. At the time of this review, the availability of these pens in the U.S. are somewhat limited, as these pens are not sold to retailers through distributors. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone. Those elements about the pen that are neither good or bad or can be good or bad depending on you. The nib is a number six stainless steel nib made by Bach. The nib has a winged emblem on the face of the nib under the breather hole, as well as the brand name and Italy laser engraved. Underneath that is an M to indicate that this is a medium nib. The feed is a standard Bach feed friction fit with the nib in a nib housing that is not unscrewable. The grip is a beer bottle shaped grip and tapers towards the nib and feed. The grip threads are part of the grip and have threads on the inside as well to hold the screw type converter. The grip screws into the inner threads of the acrylic body that has threads on the outside as well for capping. Following the threads is a gold ring that is the start of a slight step leading to the rest of the barrel. The barrel has a classic cigar shape. At the center of the barrel is the brand name engraving Italiana and number 951 to indicate the pen is numbered. Be advised, although numbered, this is not a limited edition. The pen tapers gradually until met with another gold ring accent that separates the barrel with the end cap. The end cap tapers to a more pointed end, giving this pen more of a rolled joint style shape as opposed to a cigar. The end cap is unscrewable and reveals the end of the converter piston knob, as well as gold plating on the thread assembly. This pen can be filled either by using this method or by removing the grip in the traditional manner. The cap is the same design and material as the rest of the pen. Like the end cap, the top of the cap is tapered to a point and doesn't have a finial. The clip is tension fixed, secured to the underside of the cap with a screw. This clip is recognizable in many of the Armando Simone Club pens. There's a small straight-sided wheel at the end of the clip to make clipping the pen into pockets easier. The center bands are two simple gold-plated bands separated from each other by a band of acrylic. The cap screws and unscrews in one rotation. The pen was packaged in an outer sleeve that is vibrantly decorated. Slide that off and you have a simple black cardboard box with the branding on the top. Open up that box and you have a brushed textured clamshell box. Flip that open and you have soft felt lining as cushioning for the pen with the branding up top. The pen rests in the bedding that grips the pen in a plastic pen baggie. Also included is an information booklet as well as a quality guarantee card. The included threaded converter is pre-installed in the pen. This converter is branded on the extended piston grip designed to enable filling via the end cap. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. There are so many good things to say about this pen. It's comfortable to write with, posted or unposted. It's very well balanced. Even though it's a lighter pen, it has a shape and girth that makes it feel like a solid, sturdy pen. 
The build quality is precision craftsmanship at its finest. The threads on every part of the pen are smooth and the tolerances are tight. The quality of the material is also fantastic. It has depth and vibrancy. Light punching off it gives the pen a cat's eye effect that increases the look of depth and contrast between the different levels of color. The polish is glass-like and makes for a very luxurious looking pen. And since we're on the topic of luxury, moving on to the bad, let's talk coin right after this commercial break. In the past 10 years, dozens have become infected by the fountain pen virus. Researchers say that subscribers to Penboy Roy's YouTube channel have a one in three chance of contracting the virus. If left unchecked, we may have an epidemic on our hands. As anyone with the fountain pen virus would know, the symptoms can be brutal. Spending untold sums of money on gold nibs, soliciting nibmeisters, ink hoarding, FOMO for limited edition pens. The remedy, shop at Gold Spot Pens. Side effects may include saving money, peace of mind that your pens and ink will arrive safe and sound, smiling from talking with our customer service team, and joy in receiving your brand new writing instruments from world-class brands. You can't control the fountain pen virus outbreak, but you can get relief today by visiting goldspot.com. This pen is available here in the US for an average of $200. In doing the research for this review, I looked for as many retailers that carry the pen. What I found was that there are only a handful of retailers in the US that carry them. This pen, as I stated before, is not distributed to retailers in the US through distributors. Instead, the availability is based on the individual retailer's efforts of contacting the manufacturer and buying them directly. The result is the lack of availability, but at the same time, a lower price than typical turned acrylic pens from Italy. The price seems to be established and regulated by the manufacturer. That's all I have for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. So. How does this pen write? Well, as of now, it writes amazingly, but that's the result of my having spent a good amount of time getting it to write this way. Out of the box, it did in fact skip, ink starve, and hard start. Baby's bottom had reared its ugly ass. First, I thought I needed to clean it, so I thoroughly washed it. Three times. In the end, same result. Then I looked at the tipping under magnification and discovered that the tipping on the side that makes contact with the paper opened up like an upside down V towards the paper. This resulted in the ink being held by capillary action at the top of the tipping away from the paper and thus not being able to make contact with the paper when writing. Once I would get it to write, it wrote, but only until the nib was lifted off the page. That means at the start of every word, it would hard start. That's not fun. So I decided to correct the flaw myself. I spent about 30 minutes adjusting the tines so that the inside surfaces of the tipping were parallel instead of opened up at the bottom and pinched at the top. After I did this, it didn't hard to start or skip, but it was still way too dry. So I heat set the feed and opened up the tines a bit. Once that was done, perfect. It writes as it should have out of the box, but didn't. The line is a medium line and is not too wet and not too dry. It's also super smooth. Out of the box, it was just as smooth and through the whole process, I didn't do any type of nib smoothing on any kind of micro mesh or whatnot. Now, even though now it writes like a dream, it's here in the ugly because how good it writes was a result of my time and effort and not how it wrote out of the box. I hate that the way it writes is in the ugly because the pen has so much going for it, but the truth is what it is. Perhaps this pen is a fluke and one of a very few, but even then, I can only base my review on the pen I have and treat this pen as a representation of the whole. It is easy enough to get a replacement through Goldspot or fix it yourself if you know how, but these are things that you shouldn't have to deal with. The last ugly element is minor and in my opinion, not a deal breaker. We have here a nib unit that is unscrewable and I totally get why. It's so that the nib and the engraving on the body line up when you look at it. But what I'm seeing is when I look down the length of the pen, like I were aiming down a straw to shoot a spitball, it's off by several millimeters. And being that the housing is fixed, I can't even align it myself. So in the case of this pen, the housing not being unscrewable is for a defeated purpose. I was informed by Tom at Goldspot Pens, however, that the brand will be offering these pens with unscrewable nib units moving forward. That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon, decision-making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Leonardo Officina Fiorora fountain pen? This is a tough one to call. As I said, there is a lot about this pen that is good. When it comes to aesthetics, this pen is as good as it gets. It's gorgeous and very well made. 
It's a pen whose qualities are on par with other pens that cost twice, if not three times more than what this pen costs. And again, this could be attributed to the fact that Leonardo doesn't use a distributor. Now, this probably seems like a fair trade-off, right? That is until you run into ugly issues like the nib writing with hiccups as I did with mine. Fortunately for me, I was able to correct the issue myself, but for those that can't, your options may not be as gratifying. If you buy it from Goldspot Pens, as I did with mine, you can simply get it exchanged. That is granted, they have the stock left. If they don't, you can still get it exchanged. It just may take longer, being that there is no distributor. The reason being that Goldspot Pens or any other retailer may have to wait for more stock or have to communicate directly with the manufacturer in Italy, then spend additional monies to send the pen back to Italy, then await a replacement from Italy, and finally send the pen back to you. This kind of turnover for the retailer also becomes a situation where additional money gets tied up and recovery of costs becomes delayed for a period of time that can hinder their finances. If this happens enough times, the retailers may consider the feasibility of continuing to carry the brand due to the extra time-consuming work and money involved, where had there been a distributor, the process becomes streamlined and financially safer for both parties. Having said that though, it would also raise the cost. So all that to say, if you're comfortable with the possibility of having to get your nib to write as it should by yourself or comfortable with an exchange process that may or may not take longer than you would like, then pull the trigger on this pen. For an Italian pen like this, for the price, it's worth it. But again, only if you're comfortable with the aforementioned possibilities. You may not even have to worry about it, but it's a toss up. Now, if however, you're not comfortable with the possibility of getting a nib with issues or having to tune the nib yourself or heat set the feed or having to go through an exchange process, then don't pull the trigger. Or if you really must have one, you could always go to a show and try it out if the vendor will let you. Just don't let them charge you more than $200 for it. As I said, the price is established by the manufacturer. And once again, due to there being no real distribution and pricing regulations in place, coupled with the limited availability, vendors could try and charge you more if they really wanted to. I've seen at a pen show, a vendor quote me a $224 pen show special. Oh well. That was my review on the Leonardo Officina Fiora fountain pen. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Be well, be safe.